Good afternoon guys, it's Stephen here again. Um, this uh, video tutorial today would centre on, you know, different functionalities that would enable you as a planner to basically perform schedule analysis, you know, a quick and easy, robust way to, you know, just basically go through your program as soon as you receive it. If you're new on the project, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you dissect and critically analyze the program for all its functionality you know just to get a nice clean view of you know what's come before so literally the first thing you might want to do is look at these here you've got the uh, start time finish time for each of these activities if you scroll down they all finish at different times so you have some of them 10 30 a.m. at start and it finishes at 10 a.m. the reason for that is when you draw it over you might basically have received this program off of a subcontractor as you can see here we've got varying calendars you see so what this in essence tells you is that this program seems like it's a recovery program because the rest of it is standard and it's most likely five days but for this particular area which is the construction program you can tell delay permanent uh, to permanent works activities so there is a delay so this sounds to me like it's a recovery program a six day a week uh, calendar set on activities through the construction stage you know in hindsight you'd probably think to yourself yes most likely so it definitely is uh, you look at the total flow uh, total flow values and they give you 0 0.06 now this should be whole numbers the reason for me having them this way is because as soon as you have them as decimals you're able to see you know these values should be whole numbers so I'll show you this if you had them if you had them not on decimals there you go and you close that and it gives you zero so in essence it tells you all of these are critical activities they fall on the longest path and the critical path but it doesn't exactly tell the story so with this if you hadn't pulled out your calendars you wouldn't know what type of uh, calendars you have assigned to these uh, activities so we'll go back and you know get it back to the decimal places and that in essence has already explained to us that you know there is something going on with the dates etc all right so that's uh, step number one so we pull that over there like that so with our total float value so already we can see that and for these activities you have differing start times different finish times as well you see, so we've got a finish date of 4.30, right? And it starts at 2 p.m. So this is the reason why. So if we went into the calendar, there's a possibility that we have some dates that are actually not working days. So what we'll do is we'll go straight to Enterprise. We go to the calendars. And if we pull up the calendars, the six-day week calendar, we go to Modify, as you can see, exactly as we said. You see, you have some days where there's no working days there. On a Monday, you have working days on a Saturday. Oh, sorry, on a Friday, two Fridays. You see that? So you've got working days between 8 and 3 o'clock, 3 to 4. So in essence, you can already see that, you know, this, this has, you know, basically skewed up your total flow values and this is why you're getting get, getting different times in terms of the start and finish times okay so in essence the next part of this tutorial will focus on the longest path and the critical path uh, just an easy you know straightforward method of you know schedule analysis all right so what would you rather use the critical path or the longest path now it would vary some people prefer to use the critical path so you come over to the uh, filters and there you have it the critical path you click on that and there you go so literally all the critical path really is is all of the activities with a total float value equal to zero so if we went over to our decimals again and click through that see the decimals are on two and every single one of these are on zero. You see that? So the critical path isn't exactly the truest, uh, most critical aspects or critical activities from 
you know, the start of the project to the end because we have very few activities all in red. When it's red, you know, it's critical. So if you look at it all the way through, we have some overlapping activities, which kind of does double up the risk. You see, so for instance, now these two activities here, if either of these two activities were to start late, then we have a huge problem, right? And the same with all of these others. They all start, you know, more or less, you know, within the same sort of time span. So what I would usually advise is that as a planner, you should always look at the longest path because that's the uh, s sequencing or logic of activities or sequencing of activities that make up the longest duration to the end of the project, whereas the critical path is the critical activities, all of which have a total float value equal to zero. So there we have it. So even looking at this, we have some non-critical activities on the longest path. This is the best way to actually analyze because the longest path gives you the longest durations all the way to the end of the project. So if you were to basically recover the project, you would have to look at all of these values. As you can tell, you see this. So if you had this out, this literally tells you a lot more about your true critical path, as you can see here. So we have the longest path and we have all of these critical activities, which if you analyze them a little better, you can see that some of these are not critical, these are critical, but then, you know, regardless of that, majority of the total flow values, as you can see, is 0 0.6 days, 0 0.6 days all the way down. So ideally, we want to be looking at the longest path as the true critical path on any of your programs. Okay, I do hope this was helpful. In the next tutorial, we will be talking about how to apply actuals, the differences between the fiscal percent complete and the duration percent complete, and also uh, to progress a program as planned. So that basically means that if you know everything went to plan, we literally would just come straight over here. And apply actuals right there you see that or you could do the update progress and all that means is all highlighted activities so you can do them for specific activities or you can do them for all of the highlighted activities so what I could just do is select selected activities only and what would happen is because I haven't selected any activities I can't progress it so what I would do is come back to these activities and I'd hold down the control button go on to project start Go into enabling works and this and I look at the, the data date here this is the 5th of August 16 so what I would do and that's the 18th of November so I'll progress the data date to the 18th sorry the 5th of August so update progress data date I'll put it as the 5th of August so basically all highlighted activities and what it does I apply it and it recalculates and the project has been successfully updated so if we scroll back there you go so you've got actuals on the actual bars as you can see so the project has started you've received some of this so what I would like you guys to do is just come over here click on the general sorry the status right so we click on that activity there as you can tell these all the yellow highlighted activities are on the spotlights these are the activities that I've highlighted so what I want to do is try and you know get this closer so if we bring them closer like that and just there you go so this is the baseline so it's progressing as planned we're still on course for all of these activities so that's one way of getting p6 to calculate based on your um, progressing the program as planned now if you look over here you've got the original duration you've got the actual which is 24 and then you've got the remaining 76 so in essence what that means is based on the data date that we import everything's progressed as planned in terms of duration percent complete and we've got 76 days remaining and at completion it'd be a hundred days assuming that everything progresses as planned so the duration percent complete so far is 24 percent as you can see and you've got the activity started so 
I do hope this was helpful for you guys. In the next tutorial, we will show you the other method of progressing your schedule. But this time, it won't be as planned. We'd have to enter the um, progress via the 